you need to learn Kubernetes right now. But why? Well, Kubernetes can deploy 100 Docker containers with one command. In this video, I'm going to teach you Kubernetes. We're gonna walk through what it is, how do you use it, and you'll even get a chance to lab this up for free thanks to our sponsor, Linode. They're giving you $100 credit for 60 days, so check that out, link below. I'm gonna walk you through a lab in Linode. All right, let's do this. Kubernetes, Ku Kubernetes, K-A-S, however you say it, it's amazing because it solves a huge problem we have with Docker containers or any kind of container. Like, let me show you, because you and I, we're going to create a, a website, a coffee website. We're going to sell Network Chuck coffee, and we're going to deploy it on a Docker container. Why? Because Docker's awesome. Isolated environment, better resource utilization, all kinds of stuff. If you want to learn more, or if you have no idea what that is, go watch this video right here. You'll want to know more about Docker before you try and learn about Kubernetes, because they go hand in hand. So I'll deploy my website in our Docker container. Let's go check it out. There it is. Beautiful. So professional. I mean, gosh, who professionally designed this? And guess what? People are buying our coffee like crazy. The website's doing so great. A little too great, actually. We're getting so much traffic to our site that it can't handle it. It's crashing. Not only that, but the host it's running on, it's gone down a few times. We've had a few outages. So what do we do about that? How do we solve it? Pretty simple, right? Let's set up another host. So we get another one. So we set up our second container, running another host. And with Docker, it's so easy. Just one easy command. Boom. And done. But hold up, we're not done yet. Because we have to make sure that when people hit networkchuck.coffee, when they visit the website, that it could go to this server or this server. We typically do that with a load balancer. So we have to, you know, figure out how to do a load balancer. So we throw that in there. Okay, we're awesome. Both servers are being used because they're load balanced. If one goes down, one's still up, we're solid. Well... We were, because now people, they love our coffee, man. They're, they're visiting the website like crazy. We're getting so many views and, and visits and purchases. It's almost like we're putting something in it and our servers can't handle it. They're crashing again. Ah! So what do we do? We keep scaling out. This time we're gonna be prepared. So we're gonna add not one server, but two servers. But now the process is kind of getting cumbersome. I have to go in and set up another container on that server and then on this new server and oh dang it i have to set up the load balancer to load balance between all these guys so i gotta set that up so i gotta add these suckers in there okay we should be good now right wrong turns out we're the amazon of coffee we're awesome and we have to add a ton more servers a ton more containers we're talking just astronomical numbers business is good so i have to set up and install all those machines and now i have two more load balancers to handle everything this is too much i can't do this oh, oh crap i have to update my website now we got some new coffee, which is great, but we have to make a change to every one of our containers in every one of our servers. Okay, I'm done. I got two options. I can either hire another engineer to do this for me because I'm done with this, or I need another solution. I need to somehow automate this or, hmm, maybe orchestrate this somehow. Maybe some kind of container orchestration. Know any good ones? <laughs> what about Kubernetes? Let's try that. This is where Kubernetes comes in. It will handle all this junk for us. So let's call up Kubernetes. Say, you know, man, I need some help. We're starting over. I can't do this anymore. Can you help us? And he can. Now we scale back a bit just to start. So we have our three servers here. Now the good news is that part of the setup is already done. Kubernetes is a container orchestrator. So we're still going to have our servers and we'll still need some type of container runtime which in our case will be Docker. It could be something else, container D, rocket, or whatever. So just so you know to clear that up, it's not Kubernetes or Docker, it's yes, both. We're gonna use both. Kubernetes is gonna help us make Docker better. So what do we do? Where do we start? We first introduce a new server, someone who's gonna call the shots, our master. This guy, he's the boss. He calls the shots with all these servers. He tells them what to do, keeps them in line, make sure they're not acting up. Now we do need to make our servers part of the team, part of the workforce. So we'll install Kubernetes on these servers. That's going to involve two components. We'll have our cube proxy and our cube lit. <laughs> I love the names. With those two components installed, along with their container runtime, which in our case is Docker, they are now part of the team. They are team Kubernetes. They are now worker nodes. Now what these components do, we'll cover here in a moment, but just know it's a way for the master to control them and make all this Kubernetes goodness happen. Now the master, he's a server just like these guys right here, but he's got some special components, some special roles that we gave him. These are his four jobs or his four components, and we'll cover that here in a moment, but for now, I don't know about you, but I want to do something. Theory's fun until it's not, so let's actually start making this. Let's take our Network Chuck Coffee website and let's, let's orchestrate it. Now, hold on one second. Typically, setting up Kubernetes is kind of hard. So in our environment here, we have four servers. We have our master server, which we have to install those four components making it the Kubernetes master. And then we have our three servers here, which are our worker nodes, where our containers will run. 
We'll install Docker, the Kube proxy, and the Kubelet. Again, it's kind of a not really straightforward process, but I do have good news for you. We have an easier way. You see, Kubernetes is big in the cloud. Many cloud providers have Kubernetes baked in, and it's really easy to get it set up. One of those is Linode, the sponsor of this video. And through their cloud platform, we can go in there and create a Kubernetes cluster. This is called a cluster. Basically for free, they give you a $100 credit to use for the first 60 days, and you can go crazy. Well, not too crazy. And they make it so stupid simple. Let's go do it right now. So go ahead and use my link below, get signed up and logged in, and we'll go through this right now. So once you're in Linode, on the left side here, we have a panel. If you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see right here. There it is, Kubernetes. Hit that. Click it. And they want us to add our first Kubernetes cluster. Let's do that. So we'll click Create. Let's label it. That's just a name we're going to give it. I'll name mine Network Chuck Coffee. Where do I want it to be? I want it to be close to me, so in Dallas. And then version, I'll just select the latest version, 1.17. And now we're on to how many servers do we want? How many worker nodes do we want to have in our cluster? For my lab, I'm going to go with the smaller version, the Linode 2 gigabytes. I'm going to add three worker nodes by hitting that plus sign right there. Keeping in mind, it will be $10 a month. So kind of do that math with your $100 credit you have. So I'll click on add to add those three nodes to my cluster. And as I scroll down, I get my cluster summary. Three worker nodes, 30 bucks a month. That's what I'm doing. I'll click create cluster. And now we wait. Coffee break. Let's enjoy our product. All right, and if I scroll down to the bottom here, my three nodes are ready. They're running. Awesome. Now, hold on a second though. I see one, two, three worker nodes. Uh, where's my master node? Where is it? This is what's cool about doing Kubernetes on Linode. In the cloud, you pay for everything you use, which is a great model. So I've got my three worker nodes and those are costing me $10 a month. So you would probably assume that with our master node, that would be another server that would cost us $10 a month. No, good guy Linode says, you know what? Don't worry about that. We're gonna throw in the master for free, which is super cool, but still, where, uh, where is he? <laughs> How do we use him? Well, if you look at this link right here, this URL, the Kubernetes API endpoint, that's him. That's our master. Looking back at the master components, one of his components is the Kubernetes API server. That's one of the big ones that we care about because that's how we talk to our master. That's how we tell him what to do. I mean, he's the master, but we're the master master. We're the master of masters. Okay, cool. The Kubernetes API server is how we communicate with him, but then how do we use that? <laughs> uh, it's really easy, actually. So there's a tool we can install on any machine. Really, I think it's available for Windows, Mac, and of course, Linux. It's a tool called Kube. CTL or cube cuddle. It's a command line tool that when we install it, we can then run our commands very, very similar to Docker and make things happen. Tell our master what to do. And then he tells the worker nodes what to do. So let's get that cube cuddle set up. So here we're going to install it on Linux. So I've got my Kali Linux going. You can use Ubuntu or whatever you want to use. First, we'll download the latest release of cube CTL or cuddle, cube cuddle. I had that link and these steps in the description below. So go ahead and follow that, paste that in there. I'll hit enter and it downloads the release. If I hit LS to list my files and directories, there it is right there, cube cuddle. Next, we'll want to make sure that file is executable. So I'll use the command ch mod for change modification. And then I'll do plus x to make it executable. And I'll do period forward slash cube ctl. That's the file we're going to be editing right now and done. And then I'll move that command to my path. This is important if you want to be able to use it. So we'll do sudo mv remove dot forward slash cube ctl, that same file we're looking at and move that to the forward slash user slash local slash bin slash cube CTL and hit the enter button, put in your pseudo password and done. So cube cuddles installed, but how do we access our new cluster we created in Linode? Let's do it real quick. Get back to your Linode dashboard. And if we scroll up to right here, we see cube config. It's a YAML file and it gives us all the information we need to know to connect to our cluster here. You can either download the file or do what I'm gonna do right now. And that's open up this little paper looking thing here and look at the code. I'm gonna copy mine, so I'll hit copy. And then I'll get back to my Linux box, my Kali box, and we'll create our kubeconfig file. I'm gonna use nano to create that new file. So I'll hit nano and then kubeconfig.yaml.yaml. I'll paste that in there, hit control X and then Y to save. And then one last command to get this ready, we'll use the command export cube config, all uppercase, equals that file, cube config.yaml. Done. So you're done. You're able to connect to your cluster and, and do stuff, but <laughs> what do we do now? Let's try it out. So the first command we're going to do is we're going to look at our worker nodes. Make sure they're there. Okay. Alive. Are you guys okay? It'll be cube ctl get nodes. 
This is going to get the 411 on our worker nodes that we just created in Linode. Let's check it out. There they are. Awesome. There's their names. They are ready. Only 24 minutes old. So young. Let's enter one more. We'll do cube CTL cluster dash info. And we get some cool information right here. Cube DNS. We're not going to cover that right now, but there's our master right there. I told you that was the master. Okay. So now we have our Kubernetes cluster ready. The master, the worker nodes. We even have our workstation ready. We have the cube cuddle or cube CTL tool installed so we can communicate and talk to our master through the Kubernetes API server. <sighs> but what do we do now? How do we deploy our website? That was the whole point, right? Like, how do we solve our problems? The good news is that it's very, very similar to Docker. We'll use a command that looks like this, cube CTL, and we'll say run, just like our Docker run command, and we'll create our container. Now, hold on one second. I, I got to add one more term for you to know. When we create a container in Kubernetes, we're creating something called a pod. And inside that pod, we have our container. So when you think about Kubernetes, think about pods as containers. Now, technically, the containers are inside the pods. And you can even have multiple containers inside these pods. Like we could add another one and another one. But typically, you'll have one container per pod, which sounds weird, I know, but let's create one real quick. The command will be kubectl run, like I just said. I'll name my pod, just name it network chuck coffee. And then I'll specify my Docker image that I'm going to use. So I'll do dash dash image equals, and then the image I want to pull down, which if you're going to follow along, it'll be this image right here. It'll be the network chuck forward slash NC coffee, and then colon pour over. And then we'll open up ports dash dash port equals 80, the website port, you know, HTTP. So we'll do that real quick and go. Created, done. If we use the command cube CTL get pods, we see it's happening right now. So the container is creating inside that pod. Let's do it again. Just kind of, oh, it's done. It's running. But <laughs> it's just done. We just created our first Kubernetes pod running our container, our website, which seems weird and kind of confusing. I know, trust me. But looking back at our diagram, this is what happened. Using kubectl, we said, hey, master, I want you to run with this. I want you to create a container for me, which I know will be inside a pod. So I said, kubectl, run, blah, 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 do this. And he did. Using his scheduler component, he goes, hmm, which one of my worker nodes? gets this pod. You know what? This guy right here, he's not doing anything. Hey, hey, Roger. Uh, <laughs> we'll name him Roger. Roger, I want you to run this application. Go. And he did. Now, I want to look inside this pod. I want to see what's going on. I want to know. So looking back at our Linux box, we can use a, a command called describe. It'll be kubectl describe. And we'll just put in pods. And let's see what happens. Boom. We get the whole lowdown on what this guy's doing. A lot of information. We got the name, Network Chuck Coffee. We got his IP address. Every pod is assigned its own IP address. Notice it's not public, it's a private IP address. In fact, it's so private, it's only accessible from Kubernetes nodes. We'll talk more about that here in a second. And all this stuff above this line was more pod information. Below here, we now have our container information. So the container is Network Chuck Coffee. There's the ID, the image that we pulled down, the ports that are open, and a bunch of other stuff logs and such. It's great. Now for our coffee company, we don't want to only deploy one container or one pod. We want to deploy a bunch. How do we do that with Kubernetes? That's what he's supposed to do, right? Let me show you. So what we just use the kubectl run command. That's more for like ad hoc, like let me just create a pod real quick. We're now going to try something more, more powerful, more organized, more intentional. It's called a deployment. With our deployment, we're going to say, hey, master, I don't only want just one pod. I want three. Three of what? Well, I want three Network Chuck Coffee websites. And I want port 80 open. Now, with the deployment, instead of just telling him in one command, I want this to happen, we'll actually describe what we want to happen in a file. And we'll tell him to look at that file. And I've already got the file built out. Let's go look at it real quick. This is our deployment file. It's a YAML file, just like our uh, cube config earlier. These files that describe how Kubernetes can create our pods and, and design our infrastructure, we often call these manifest. Notice that Kubernetes is all very uh, ship themed. The word Kubernetes is actually the Greek word for a helmsman or, or a captain, a person who steers the ship. And of course, a ship manifest, things like that. So it's all very nautical. And this particular manifest, the kind is obviously going to be a deployment. So here in this file, just a few things I'll show you real quick. We named it. This is going to be a deployment. The app will be named NC Coffee. Replicas. How many of these suckers do we want out there? We specified right here. We want three. And then down here, we're specifying what container we want to use. We're naming our container NC Coffee, and then there's our container that we're pulling from the Docker Hub. And then, of course, we want to use port 80 because that's the website port. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to copy all this mess. I'll have that a link to the file below. We're going to hop back into our terminal here in Linux. I'll create the file. Do nano NC 
coffee deployment, you can name yours or whatever you want to name it, dot yaml. And then I'll paste that stuff in there. And then control X, Y, enter to save, and it's ready. And the command is very simple. Now before we do this, I want to delete our pod that we had earlier, because if I do cube ctl get pods, he's still sitting there. Let's delete him real quick. So I'll do cube ctl delete pods, and I'll just specify his name, network chuck coffee. And he's gone. If I do get pods again, he sure is gone. So now let's deploy our deployment. The command will be cube ctl apply dash f and then we'll specify that file name nc coffee deployment dot yaml and that's it i mean it's pretty simple right all the work all the know-how is in that file and i'll hit enter done so if i do real quick i want to go fast cube ctl get pods look they're creating so oh, and they're already done they're already done okay cool and just like that three containers three pods created. And here's the cool part about Kubernetes. It's the concept of desired state. That manifest file, that deployment is saying, hey, Kubernetes uh, master, I want there to always be three pods with this image running. Always. Not two, not four, not 12. I want three. And he will constantly make sure that's the case. He'll be going, okay, so that manifest out. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, we're good. And he's always making sure it's that state, our desired state. Now, if we were to change that manifest file, we can, like, let's say, you know, three isn't cutting it for me anymore. I want, I want 10. Let's do 10. We can edit that file. So let me do control L to clear it out here. I'll do cube CTL edit deployment and whatever we named our deployment, which I believe was NC coffee deployment. Is that what it was? No, that's not what it was. Let me do cube CTL get deployments. There it is right there. And that's another cool command, right? We can see our deployment right there. Three up to date, three available. Awesome. So now let's actually edit it. Cube CTL edit network chuck coffee dash deployment. Oh, I got to specify deployment there. So let's scroll down to the replicas right here. I'm going to hit I to insert and start editing. I'll delete the three and let's put in 10. So this is going to be VI, not nano. So I'll hit escape colon WQ to write and quit and enter. It's been updated. So let's, let's do this real quick. Cube CTL get pods. It already started creating them. Look at that. <laughs> That's amazing, right? And just like that, 10 pods running because the the commander, the helmsman, Kubernetes, the master, he was like, oh, we got to update a manifest. Let me check it out. Oh, gee willikers, we need 10. He talks like that. We need 10 of these, these 10 going right now. And he does it. Now, 10, we only have three servers, right? Like we, looking back at our diagram here, we have three servers. How can we have 10 containers and pods? Well, that's the thing. You can have a bunch of pods of the same type on one node. That's fine. That's part of the scheduler's job. The master with a scheduler component will look at all his worker nodes, figure out how busy they are, and assign things, give them jobs. Again, if Roger's over there just kind of chilling out, he, he goes, hey, you know, Roger can afford to do a few extra things. I'm going to give him something. Another cool view of our pods is uh, cube CTL get pods dash O and wide. And we can see their name and their IP address and what server they're running on or what worker node they're, serve, uh, they're running on. So notice this guy right here, he's running on blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the end of it's 233. This guy's running on blah, blah, blah. The end of it's 712. And they're all distributed kind of evenly, right? And it's the job of the master node to keep monitoring that process to make sure that any one worker node isn't overworked. And if they are overworked, he'll take away those pods. He'll say, hey, you know what? You're too busy. Let me take some of that work off you. He'll remove the pod and then give it to someone else. Now we still have a problem here though. Things are awesome, actually. We we ran our deployment, and we've got a million pods out there, 10. But every one of these pods has an internal IP address, an IP address that we can't access. Like, a web, like we can't go to our web browser and, and put the IP address in. It won't happen. Like, right now, your stuff, your website, our website cannot be accessed. How do we fix that? Well, we have to expose it. This is where the true power of Kubernetes comes in. I know at this point, it's like, okay, Chuck, I'm not seeing the big picture. How is Kubernetes helping us with all this stuff? We're about to unwrap it here right now. It's cool that we can deploy pods like crazy. We could even say if our pods start to get stressed out, let's say they go over 75% of utilization on the CPU, I want you to scale out. I want you to go from 10 to 20 or 20 to 30. The master can monitor the, the metrics of your, your cluster and make sure your website's doing great. And if your website isn't, well, then we better get some more stuff going. But anyways, let's talk about how we can get our website accessible to the outside world. So in order for Johnny right here to buy our coffee, to get to our websites and get to our pods, we have to expose them, but right now they're not exposed. 
In Kubernetes, when you want to expose a pod or a group of pods to a network, we're going to deploy a service. This will expose our pods to the internet like we want, and it'll actually be a load balancer. So when Johnny tries to access, it'll hit that service, and the service will expose the pods and also load balance between the pods. So let's deploy that service right now. And just like our deployment, our service will be described in a YAML file, another manifest. Basically just a set of instructions to give our master saying, hey, master, make this happen, buddy. So a few things here real quick. The kind, it's a service. We're naming it coffee service. And then down here in the server specs, we have what type of service it's going to be. It's going to be a load balancer. We're load balancing port 80 on both the load balancer and the pod website traffic. And then here's the important part and the killer thing about this, the selector, which pods are we going to load balance? It'll be any pod that has the app label NC Coffee. This is important because if you look back at our deployment where we deployed our pods, our app label for our pods was NC Coffee. So any pods that has the app label NC Coffee, that load balancer is going to load balance between those. So here, here's what's killer about that is that if we create two pods, it's going to load balance that as long as it has a label NC Coffee. If we create 2000 pods, as long as it has the label NC Coffee, it's going to load balance between those 2000 pods. It's just automatic. We don't have to worry about it once we create it. So let's do it. So just as before, I'm going to copy all this code here, this YAML, and I'll get back into my Linux box. I'll create a new file, nano coffee-service.yaml. Paste that in there and do a control X to save, Y for yes, and get out of there. And then we'll apply that service. And all we have to do is uh, cube CTL, just like before. We'll do apply dash F to specify our template, our manifest, and it'll be coffee dash service dot YAML dot YAML. And let's do it. Now it's doing something very exciting. I I'm going to, okay, I'm just going to enter this command. Cube CTL get services. This is a service we're looking at now. And there it is right there, coffee service. And it's already done crazy fast. Now what's cool about this is that it created a load balancer in Kubernetes, but it also created a load balancer in our cloud provider. Remember I told you that Kubernetes loves cloud providers and then the, the love goes both ways. So when I do this command, it actually created what's called a node balancer in Linode. Let's go check it out real quick. In Linode, I'll go back to my side menu here. And right here is a node balancer. It's just their, their clever name for uh, their load balancers. If I click on that, there it is right there. My node balancer was created. You see that IP address right there? It's the same exact one as what we're seeing here in uh, in the Kubernetes master, the external IP right there. And we can see in the Linode portal in our backend status, we have three nodes up, which is our three worker nodes. But in Kubernetes, it's load balancing between 10 pods. Let's see if it worked. Let's go to our website. I'm going to copy the IP address, open up a new tab, and see if it worked. Bam, there's our coffee website being load balanced across 10 pods in Kubernetes. It's running, it's working, it's alive. And we can go in here and buy all the coffee we need. And so you believe me about the Kubernetes stuff. I want to show you how to look at that service and verify it's going between your 10 pods. If we do kubectl get services and we'll specify our coffee service, we'll get the lowdown. Oh, I'm sorry, not get. <laughs> describe. We want to describe that service. So describe services. Describe is always getting more detail. Coffee-service. And there's all the beautiful information you want to see about this. And then right here, our endpoints, these few suckers, and then seven more it's going to be load balancing uh, for. So cool. Amazing. Oh, now hold on. You know what I realized? Looking at our coffee, we get a new coffee in, Peru decaf. And all we have is Peru, so now we have to update our website. Not too bad with Kubernetes. Let's try it out real quick. We've already got the Docker image out there. The Docker image is ready to go. All we have to do is pull it and put it out to our, what, 10 containers now? 10 pods? Let's do that right now. Back at our Linux box, I'm going to edit my deployment. So I'll do kubectl edit deployment, and it was network chuck coffee dash deployment. Why did I make it so long? There we go. Okay. Two things I want to change right now. First is I want, instead of 10 servers, <laughs> I want to go to 20 servers. Why not? And then I'm going to change the image I'm looking for. Instead of network chuck coffee slash nc coffee colon pour over, the new label I'm going to use is VACPOT. That's our latest version. So I'm changing the image it's going to pull from. If you want to follow along, you can do the same thing right now. I'm going to hit escape colon WQ to write and quit and hit enter. It's been updated. It's been edited. And what should be happening now is if I do cube <laughs> CTL get pods, I should have a bunch of new pods. Now see, it's creating some new ones and terminating old ones because it's updating the existing ones. <laughs> and now just like that, look at that. 
ah, it's so crazy. So now we have 20 pods. The 10 we already had were updated. They were killed, brought down, terminated, you're fired. And we created 10 new ones with that new image. And then we added 10 more with that new image. And if we look at our load balancer, if I do cube CTL, get services, and I look at my load balancer again, so I'll do cube CTL, describe services, coffee dash service. <laughs> look at that, my endpoints, it's automatically load balancing between the 20. That's powerful. I save myself a lot of time now. When I update my website, I update it in one place, my, my Docker image. And then I just update my manifest file and the rest is history. How great, how amazing is that? Let's see if the website works though, by the way. Let's see if our Peru decaf has been added. So I'll just refresh this page. There it is, there it is. Oh my gosh, how exciting is that? Kubernetes, truly container orchestration, container automation. Now I just scratched the stinking surface with Kubernetes. So much I glossed over and so much you can do. If you wanna dive deeper, it's right here in your website. <laughs> First of all, if you don't know what a Docker container is, go watch my video, that's a link to that. What I use to go a bit deeper with Kubernetes is first this Pluralsight course by Nigel, whatever his name is, great, fantastic, check that out. And then a book called Kubernetes in Action, it is insanely detailed and amazing, go check that out. And of course, if you wanna support more of what I'm doing, go check out This Is IT and support the mission. Now, if you haven't already, you can do this lab yourself. Go sign up for a free account with Linode, you get $100 of credit just to play with and use, and you can do this. So check it out, link below, and thanks to Linode for doing that and for sponsoring this video. Now, real quick, if you did it already, make sure you clean up after yourself. And what I mean is you don't want to leave this running open-ended because you'll you'll see a bill if you leave it going forever. So what I would do is, uh, once you're done playing, get to your Linode dashboard, go to the Kubernetes cluster, and you can click your little dots here at the bottom right and say, delete. It'll say, are you, are you sure you really want to do this? And yeah, I do. So just put your cluster name in there, Network Chuck Coffee, and click on delete. And it, it goes away. It goes away. So no more money being charged to you. And then also don't forget about the node balancers. That will not go away by itself, I don't believe. So if you go to the left panel here, go to node balancers, there's the one you should have there. Same thing, click on the dots and click delete. And it goes away. That node balancer also does cost money. I think it it's about 10 bucks a month as well. And that's Kubernetes. Uh, it's kind of an intense thing to learn because you already have to know about Docker containers and then you build on that knowledge by learning about uh, container orchestration, which is really cool, like it's amazing, but it can be very complex. Now, if you wanna play with Kubernetes more, of course you can do that in the cloud. Uh, most cloud providers have Kubernetes built in. That's one of the reasons you should learn Kubernetes because it makes you more valuable when you're going down that cloud path. If you know how to operate and use Kubernetes, valuable skill. Uh, but as far as having your own lab, you can run Kubernetes in your own lab on bare metal servers, on virtual machines, or even just on your one computer. They have what's called Minikube, and you can just run Kubernetes on one workstation. It's pretty cool. So there are options. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you're able to go through the lab. Uh, if you think Kubernetes is amazing, just let me know below. I, I, I love seeing your comments, and it really encourages me to keep going and keep making videos like this. Well, that's all I got. Um, this video took a lot. <laughs> I had to learn Kubernetes from the ground up, uh, but it's fun learning new things. And I encourage you to do what I did. When you learn something new like this, turn it around and make a video about it or make a blog post. Teach someone about it. it really two things happen. You, you learn it better when you teach it. And also you're helping people. You're helping someone else who's coming behind you to learn that same technology. And then third, uh, kind of a bonus, it shows future employers that you can first of all communicate and learn something new. You're, you're, you're hungry for knowledge. Anyways, yeah, that's, that's really all I got. I'm, I'm gonna stop talking now. Um, if you haven't already, hit that like button. If you like the video, it does help. Subscribe, notification bell, you know, all that stuff. And uh, if you wanna help me do more of this, make training, uh, make videos, make certification stuff, uh, check out This Is IT or hit the join button on the YouTube thing below. Or you know what? You can buy some Network Chuck coffee because it's a legit thing. Go to networkchuck.coffee. You can actually go to my real website. Well guys, that's all I got. I'll catch you later.